That's what Campbell soups are. Mm, good. From Hollywood, the Campbell Soup Show, starring Jack Carson. <laughs> Yes, listen to Jack Carson, Freddie Martin and his orchestra, Arthur Treacher, Jack's nephew Tugwell, played by Dave Willock, the late year old Norma Jean Nilsson, Irene Ryan, and yours truly, Del Charbon. <laughs> Youngsters' meals are a special problem this last week before Christmas. Boys and girls are likely to be overexcited and eat in a hurry. So mother must be extra sure that the food she serves is easy for young tummies to digest. And that's the time for big bowls of Campbell's vegetable soup. Children love it. They like the hearty flavor of the rich beef broth, thick with nutritious garden vegetables. Mmm, good. And mothers know that here is just the kind of dish that active youngsters need these busy days. So why not make Campbell's vegetable soup your main lunch dish, maybe tomorrow? Well, the Yuletide spirit has really come to 22 North Hollywood Lane. And here, browsing over his Christmas list, we find Jack Carson. Are you still pondering over that Christmas list, sir? Yes, yes, Richard. By the way, I, I can't think of anything to get for you. Uh, did you like what I gave you last year? Like it? Well, uh, I don't know, sir. I haven't figured out yet what it is. <laughs> what it is? Preacher, my Aunt Mabel knitted that for you with her own hands. It must be a sweater. Well, that's what I thought, sir. But after I got it on, I discovered it had feet in it. <laughs> oh, well, then it must be a suit of long underwear. Underwear? Mm-hmm. Well, they're the first ones I've ever seen with a turtleneck trap. <laughs> Well, when, when Aunt Mabel knits something, she gets carried away. I remember once she made me a house coat. It was a little too big for me, but if I'd have knocked off one chimney, I would have looked great on the house. <laughs> How about Master Tugwell, sir? Have you decided uh, you decided what to give him? Well, you know, I, I'm buying him that bicycle from the mail order house on the installment plan. They send him one part at a time. Yes, sir. I remember last year you gave him one half of a handlebar. <laughs> well, I gave him a half a handlebar on purpose. You see, that way he can stare with one hand and hold the bicycle together with the other. <laughs> Some of the nuts and bolts keep falling off. But it was a good idea because I want Tugwell to learn about mechanics. Any growing boy should know... Uh, oh, hello, Tugwell. We were just talking about you. You know, Santa Claus will soon be here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Have you got anything in mind you'd like him to bring you? Oh, sure, millions of things. Mm -hmm. I want a football, a magic set, and a uh, twenty-two rifle, yeah. and a tennis racket, uh, and a wristwatch, and a key uh, ring. Just, just a minute. And, oh, just... and Uncle Jack, I also want a midget auto racer. Yeah. Oh, boy, a midget racer. Look out. Here I come down the track. <laughs> Tug, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't get carried away. Oh, Uncle Jack, how'd you like my imitation? <laughs> Swell imitation. For Christmas, I'll get you a fox tail. You can hang it on your nose. <laughs> By the way, Tug, well, just, uh, just what is still missing from your bicycle? Oh, one half of the handlebars in the seat. Oh, isn't there a seat? No. Well, when you ride, what have you been sitting on? What I always sit on. No, no. <laughs> That isn't what I mean. I mean, what is in the place where the seat should be? Uh, pieces of my skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I when I go riding, I have to stand up on the pedals. See, there's nothing underneath me except that sharp corner of the frame. Frame? Yeah. One day I forgot and sat down. <laughs> Took the bicycle three blocks to catch up with me. <laughs> well, after Christmas, Tug, well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Now, let's see. I still have little Norma Jean next door to remember. Oh, didn't you intend to give her some sort of toy, sir? Yeah, well, I looked at a few last week, and they've got some miraculous mechanical dolls this year. Oh, oh I saw one that was great. It was a President Truman doll. A uh, Truman doll, sir? Can you tell it's him? Oh, yes, indeed. He's wearing a felt hat, glasses, and a small piano. 
It's so realistic. You wind it up and he plays two choruses of Waltz Me Around Again, Lewis. <laughs> Well, is that what you're going to get for, Uncle Jack? Well, I don't know whether to get her that doll or my Christmas album of records for children. How much was the Truman doll, sir? Oh, uh, $12. How much was your album? $2 and a half. Truman wasn't in very long, was he? <laughs> it had nothing to do with it. Norma Jean happens to like music. That's I'll go downtown sometime today and get those records. But, Carson, if you intend to go shopping, I suggest you do it at once. These last-minute crowds are frightful. Oh, don't worry. All I have to buy is one item and, uh, come in. Well, I'm back again, Mr. Carson. Oh, uh, hello, Norma Jean. And, Preacher, haven't you something to do in the kitchen? And, Tugwell, why don't you go read a book or something? Why? Uh, well, it's Christmas time, and who knows, maybe Norma Jean and I have a little secret. Mr. Carson, I'm getting kind of tired of that game you taught me this morning. Uh, uh, what game is that? Uh, Tugwell, just run along. This doesn't concern you. Mr. Carson taught me a game called Post Office. Uh, Norma Jean, I... Post Office... <laughs> Yes, Mr. Carson invented it. He puts the addresses on his Christmas cards, and I deliver them in person. <laughs> you see, it, it keeps her from getting into mischief. <laughs> My mother says it keeps you from buying stamps, too. <laughs> Norma Jean, I intended to give you a penny for each one you deliver. See, at three cents a stamp, that's a it's saving. Never mind, money. never mind what's a saving. I delivered 12 cards already, but I brought two cards back on account of the addresses. What was wrong with the addresses? Nothing, but I couldn't find Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> that, that card must have got in there by mistake. I only wanted you to, li- to deliver the cards around the neighborhood. Oh, I had fun doing it. And you know what, Mr. Carson? I saw two Santa Clauses. You did? Yes. They were out in front of the department store ringing their bells. Mr. Carson, how is it possible that there could be two Santa Clauses together? How? Oh, well, that's uh, that's on account of the uh, uh, the union. <laughs> See, the Santa Claus in front is with the AF of Al, and the other one is picketing him. <laughs> but don't you worry about it, honey. They're just a couple of Santa Claus's helpers. I'm going downtown today to see the real Santa Claus. You are? Mm Mm-hmm. And I'll try to get him to bring you something nice for Christmas. Oh, boy. Have you got some more Christmas cards to deliver? Uh, No, no, honey. But here's the money I owe you so far. Gee, thanks. Goodbye now. So long, honey. Are we going to Miss Ryan's store first, Uncle Jack? Yes, Doug. Well, you see, if she happened to have the album of my records, then we won't have to go downtown at all. Oh, gee, I hope so. Those crowds of shoppers are murdered. Oh, well, a few crowds don't bother me. You know, Christmas is really a wonderful thing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Uh, Well, there's Miss Ryan's store. I hope she's got that album in stock. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, hello, Miss Ryan. Oh, hello there, Mr. Carson. And you've got Tugwell with you, too. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's getting near Christmas, Miss Ryan. There's a real snap in the air. Doesn't that make you feel great? Oh, I guess I'm about as well as could be expected. <laughs> oh. Uh, what's the matter with you, Miss Ryan? Tugwell, you should have never asked her that. <laughs> It seems that my life is just suffer, suffer, suffer. I've still got all of my old pains, but today I woke up with a new one. A new one. Well, I, I was going around the corner to the bank, but first I thought I'd stop in and see if you had one of those albums of records I made for children. I've never had a pain quite like this new one. It's a dormant pain. A dormant pain? You mean it doesn't shoot or jab or travel? No. It just lays there. (laughs) All my other pains have to go around it. Ah, that's too bad. Well, I was going around the corner to the bank. Of course, those old pains still bother me, too. Yes, well, I was going around the corner. I'm full of aches. Dull aches, sharp aches, throbbing aches. Well, I was going around the corner. And another thing. If I could only get around that corner, I'd be all right. (laughs) I'm not trying to change the subject, Miss Ryan, but have you got that album I made? Even though I do feel bad all the time, I try to be cheerful. I woke up this morning and I said, I'm thankful I'm still living. 
Uh, are you still? I mean, are you thankful? <laughs> What we really dropped uh, in for, Miss Ryan, was, do you have any of those albums I made for children? Oh, you mean Willie and Hannibal and Mouseland. Uh-huh. Say, those records were awfully cute. I played them a lot. Well, thank you. Do you happen to have one left? Oh, I'm sorry. I sold the last one yesterday. Oh, maybe you can get one down at a department store, Uncle Jack. We'd better get started, too. These crowds are awful big. Yeah, and I've got to stop at the bank first. Goodbye, Miss Ryan. Goodbye. I'll just stop at the bank for a minute, and then we'll go on to the, the department store. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Hey, Uncle Jack, bells. doesn't that Santa Claus stand over there in the corner look familiar? Yes, he does. Oh, gosh, no wonder he looks familiar. It's Del Charbot. Come on, let's go talk to him. Hello, Del. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Dugwell. What's the idea of you being dressed up in that Santa Claus suit? Oh, I'm just doing a friend of mine a favor. You see, he's the regular Santa Claus here, and I told him I'd stay here until he got a bite to eat. I see. Well, anybody can tell you're not very experienced, Del. You've got to be more jolly. Here, give me that bell, and I'll show you. <clears throat> Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Well, yes, I'll have to admit, Jack, that I don't know much about it. But, you know, I do get a kick out of talking to people. Oh, you ought to see the kiddies' eyes light up when they ask Santa what I'm going to bring them for Christmas. And I tell them, a steaming bowl of Campbell's vegetable soup. Kids are so lucky nowadays. <laughs> but, Del, is that really what you tell them you're going to bring them? Well, sure, Jack. Kids really go for Campbell's vegetable soup. It's the homey, substantial kind of soup that makes a hit with hearty, eating young folks. In fact, women everywhere say Campbell's vegetable soup is almost a meal in itself. And they find it mighty handy at lunch or supper time these busy holidays. Well, Mr. Sharber, what do you what do you do if you come up against a sassy little kid? Oh, Tugwell, I can handle that kind. Uh, you just have to be nice to them. Uh, I bet if I were a sassy kid, you couldn't handle me. Oh, oh yes, I could. Uh-huh. Okay, let's pretend I'm a kid and you're Santa Claus. All right. Hello there, little boy. Ah, who are you talking to? <laughs> you. <laughs> my, my, you're a husky little fellow, aren't you? Ah, you fattest goatee! <laughs> come, come, little man. Come sit on Santa's knee. You'll be sorry! <laughs> now tell me... What do you want for Christmas? I want a steam engine. Oh, of, of course, but uh, what else do you want? You know, it has a red and white label on it, and it comes in a can. Uh, popcorn? No. Uh, penis? No. Hey, why did you forget the whole thing and just bring me the steam engine? Now, look, little boy, I'm talking about Campbell's Vegetable Soup. Ooh, Campbell's Vegetable Soup! Mm -hmm. With that rich beef stock filled with no less than 15 different kinds of garden vegetables! <laughs> all your favorites, all cooked to tempting tenderness! That's right! And when you're finished with a bowl of Campbell's Vegetable Soup, you'll say, Mmm, good. But tell me, little boy, how did you happen to say all of that? Because you... We're twisting my arm. <laughs> well, I, I can't play games any longer with you, Del. I have to go to the bank and then do some shopping. Okay, Jack, I'll see you later. Okay, and uh, Santa... Uh, yes? I was only kidding. I really love that soup. You do really love that soup? Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's very little nourishment in a steam engine. <laughs> Now, from Jack's picture, The Time, The Place, and The Girl, Freddie Martin brings you Oh, But I Do, sung by Clyde Rogers.
I don't love you Oh, but I do How can I show that I do You think I don't get blue Oh, but I do Though I get light-hearted too First I'm singing Then I'm sighing Then I'm flying high You think I don't know why Oh, but I do I know that it's you I love Jack, how much longer are we going to be here in this bank? Oh, not much longer, Tug. Well, there are only two people ahead of me in this line. There you are, Mr. Clark. It came through from the Bank of England this morning. A letter of credit for $250,000. Thank you. Next. Oh, hello, Mr. Fisher. I've got that certified check ready for you. There you are. One million dollars. Thank you. Next. Hello. Well, Mr. Carson, have we got our piggy bank full again? <laughs> Look, it's, it's about business. I, I come in every year about this time, remember? Oh, yes, but you're a little early. Our calendars won't be out till January 1st. <laughs> Look, the very first thing I want to know is about those securities you're holding in your vault for me. Securities? You know what I'm talking about. Those eight-cent airmail stamps I got stuck with. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, the market value hasn't fluctuated a bit. Do you want to draw them out? Uh... No, hold them a little longer. The Democrats may get back in again. <laughs> but I, I really came in to draw out some cash from my Christmas savings fund. You still have it safe and sound, I hope? Yes, we have the whole amount right here, Mr. Carson. Just the way you brought it in. <laughs> all in pennies. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with pennies. I stacked them up and rolled them in paper wrappers, just like you told me. Look, Mr. Carson, this may come as a surprise to you, but since the beginning of banking history, it's been sort of a gentleman's agreement to put 50 pennies in each roll. You mean... Yes. Yours had only 49. Well, that, that could happen. That mistake could happen to anybody. Maybe in the hurry of wrapping them, I just counted wrong and accidentally put in 49 instead of 50. One of the rolls had 44 pennies and six tiddledywigs. <laughs> well, the, the little girl next door helped me wrap them, and she might have done that for a joke. <laughs> Besides, uh, uh, Uncle Jack, come on, you're, you're attracting a lot of attention. Well, I don't care. It wasn't my fault, Tugwell. Listen, mister, I'd like to draw out some money, if you don't mind. I'm going Christmas shopping. How much do you want? <laughs> Two dollars and fifty cents. What are you going to buy, a Kaiser or a Fraser? <laughs> Please don't make me lose my temper or I'll take my business someplace else. Okay, here's your two dollars and a half. Uh, I'd rather have three one dollar bills and I'll give you fifty cents change. All right, here's the three dollars. Mm -hmm. And here's your fifty cents. Uh, wait a minute. Will you raise your right hand and swear there are no tiddledywinks in this one? <laughs> well, I haven't got time for that now. Come on, Tugwell, well, let's get down to the department store. Jingle bells, jingle bells, da dee da dee dee. Da Uncle Jack, da how can you da keep da singing da like that? Gee, we've been standing in this line for two hours. We're not even in the store yet. Tuck, well, you've got to expect these inconveniences when you go shopping at Christmas time. The main thing to remember is whenever you begin to lose your temper, just sing uh, jingle bells. He at the, the jingle bells. Well, we'll, jingle we'll never get in the store unless we get through this crowd of people. <laughs> well, come on, I'll show you how it's done. Folks will let you pass through if you just remember to be polite. Now stay close to me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> 
Pardon me? Pardon me? Pardon me? Oh, oh, oh! oh. Well, the lights went out. I can't see anything. What happened? That lady just pardoned you with her umbrella. <laughs> Which lady? Why? Uh, uh, Uncle Jack, Uncle Jack, remember. Uh, remember, Jingle Bells. Huh? Jingle. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, all the way. Well, we're inside the store anyway. Now, all we have to do is find the music department and get those records. Now, hang on to me, Tug. Well, and I'll ask this young lady at this counter. Uh, excuse me, miss. Can you tell me where the music department is? Music department? Who's got time to listen to music in this madhouse? Well, I only thought that... This is ladies' lingerie, Bob. Are you interested? Ladies' lingerie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 thank you. No. <laughs> I've got scanties, panties, snuggies, huggies, step in, step outs, and the sure grip non skid girdle. <laughs> no thanks, I I don't want a girdle. They're very cozy, and if you do the rumber in this girdle, it's impossible for South America to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Come on, Tugwell, let's get away from this counter. Oh, Uncle Jack, what are all those peculiar pink things? Tug, well, real gentlemen are not interested in things like that. Oh. Well, then why are you always looking at them in the mail order catalog? <laughs> that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about now. Oh, and gee, look at that thing hanging up there. It's a shower curtain with garters. <laughs> Tug, well, will you come away from here? Okay. Gee. Life is so mysterious. There must be a music department here someplace. Gee, I've never stood in so many lines in all my life, Uncle Jack. We've been standing in this one for 45 minutes. I know, Tugwell, but standing in line is the only way you can get up to the music counter. It won't be much longer. Jingle bells, jingle bells, yeah, see, we're moving up already, Tugwell. Well, it's about time. I wonder how my record album of Willie and Hannibal and Mouseland is selling anyway. Well, it was a long wait, but here we are at last, at the end of the line. Look, Uncle Jack, this isn't the line that goes to the music counter. No. <laughs> well... While we're here, we may as well wash our hands. <laughs> How do you like wasting all that time standing in the wrong line? Why, I ought Uncle to... Jack, remember. I what? Remember. What? Oh, oh, yes. Jingle bells. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we got that straightened out. I'm, I'm sure this is the right counter. Yeah, and here comes a clerk now. Yeah. Oh, uh, pardon me, mister. <laughs> I, I'd like to buy some phonograph records. Uh, fine. I'm in charge of the classical records. What did you have in mind? Something by Sibelius? Well, I... Uh, perhaps something a little heavier. Say, Brahms' second concerto in E minor? Well, I... Or maybe uh... De Meister Singer by Richard Wagner? No. No, the album I want is not... Quite so classical. It's called Willie and Hannibal in Mouseland. (laughs) Willie and Hannibal where? In Mouseland. You mean Mouseland in the sense of the land where mice live? (laughs) Yes, you see, it's for children about eight years old. I'm sorry, I don't have it. But could I interest you in some bubble gum? <laughs> well, listen, this album I'm referring to it happens to be very interesting. You see, a little boy named Willie meets a little mouse named Hannibal. They get to be good friends, and the mouse takes the boy down into Mouseland through a mouse hole in the wall. And when he gets uh, there... Just one moment. This full-size boy goes through a mouse hole? Yes, yes, it's quite easy. And when the other mice see Willie standing there, they all come running. Ibbity bibbity sibbity sav. Uh, how? <laughs> that's, that's the way mice run, you know. Ibbity bibbity sibbity sav. Ibbity bibbity sibbity. Yeah, thank you very much. Wait a minute, where are you going? If anybody wants me, I'll be in the third mouse hole on the left. <laughs> hey, I think we better get out of here, Uncle Jack. There's a crowd gathering. No, 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 Tug. Well, I want to explain this. You see, mister, right there comes a song. 
What makes people get so scared of mice? You see? And the mice like the song so much, they all sing it, too. The, uh, mice sing. <laughs> yes. Yes, you see, they all come right. Yeah, I know. Ibbity bibbity shibbity sang. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh-huh. Oh, Mr. Clayton, I'm afraid we've got another one of those you know what. <laughs> What's that? What are you doing? Oh, nothing, nothing. Go ahead with your little story. I'm very interested. You know, I've never heard a mouse sing. Oh, sure. They have all different kinds of voices. The little teeny mice sing with little teeny voices. They sing way up high like that. And the big fat ones have low voices and they sing bass. Fiddly dum squeak squeak. Fiddly dum squeak squeak. Fiddly dum okay, squeak squeak. Hey, buddy, come what? quiet. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's got hold of my arm? It's two men in white coats, Uncle Jack. Yeah. Well, let go of me. I didn't do anything. Take it easy, buddy. We know it's just a strain of Christmas shopping. Yeah, this is the fourth guy what blew his top today. I did not blow my top. I was only telling this man here a story. It's about a little boy who goes down to mouse land through a mouse hole. Through a mouse hole? I think we'll need a straitjacket for this one, Joe. Let go of me. Let go, I said. Come on, buddy. Where you're going, you'll have all the little mice you want. Yeah. And guess what? Tonight, we'll even let you meet Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> you can't do this. Now, quit dragging me. That man behind the counter can straighten this out. You know I'm not crazy, don't you? Well, say something. ibbity bibbity sibbity say. Come along, buddy. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This is an outrage. Tugwell, don't just stand there. For heaven's sakes, do something. Jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> Jack Carson will be back in just a moment. Twas the week before Christmas, and all through the house, there are a million and one things Mother must be doing. So why not build supper a couple of times round bowls of good hot soup? Serve Campbell's vegetable soup, for instance, and you don't need much else, for this good soup is so deep down hearty. Mothers everywhere tell us it's almost a meal in itself. The beef stock is rich, and the vegetables are so tender they about melt in your mouth. Lots and lots of them, too. Fifteen different kinds, luscious tomatoes, young lima beans, green peas, sweet golden corn, and many other favorites. Thick in that rich beef stock. Mmm, good. Yes, ma'am, you'll please the family, help take care of appetites, and save valuable time if you build maybe a couple of suppers this week round bright steaming bowls of Campbell's vegetable soup. Better put it on tomorrow's market list. Mmm, good. Mmm, good. That's what Campbell's soups are. Mm, good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Jack Carson wishing you the merriest of all Christmases from all of us who live in and around 22 North Hollywood Lane. Inviting you to join our own Christmas party on Christmas night. Until then, good night. Good luck to you all. Mm, good. Mm, good. That's what Campbell's soups are. Mm, good. Tune in Robert Trout with the news till now. Every day, Monday through Friday, hear the program with the most complete news coverage in all radio. In addition to every leading news gathering service, each day Robert Trout's own correspondents in world news centers send him first hand facts, human interest stories behind the day's events. For complete, accurate, unbiased news, tune in CBS, 6 45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Robert Trout with the news till now. Every night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for Dr. Christian, following immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 